Hi, I'm Howard, instructor trainer. Thank you for tuning in. Today I'm going to do a little video on goal setting and risk management. And um, we're amidst the um, coronavirus lockdown, so not a lot of teaching going on at the moment. So I thought a great opportunity just to um, do this video. And this is really aimed at anyone doing their ADOA part three exams. I know they've all been um, cancelled, but I believe dates are coming through that you should now have your new dates to take your exams. And anyone, of course, looking to take a standards check, this could help them. Maybe you've just failed a standards check and want a little bit of help on your goal setting and risk management. So my inspiration for this video was books. So, um, so let me just grab this. So if we have a look at this book, um, Practical Teaching Skills for Driving Instructors by John Miller and now Susan McCormick. McCormack, sorry. So uh, it's a new version of the book. This is the older version. So a lot of you may have this version. This is version the 10th edition. Um, so earlier this year, I think it was in February, they updated to the new one. Now, what I noticed different is that it, there's a new chapter, which, and that's what my inspiration for this video. So chapter seven, goal setting and risk management. And I really feel this will help you understand what you need to do for your part three in terms of setting goals and managing risk. So let's sort of just kick that off. So obviously our goal for each lesson that we deliver, whether it's a test lesson or just a normal lesson, is to deliver a great lesson. We want learning to take place and we want our customer to have good value for money. And these are essentially what the examiner's looking for when he sits in the back and watches your lesson. He's thinking, well, was that a good lesson? Did learning take place? Was it safe? And um, would he pay for it? Would he pay the £27 an hour? Um, often I've heard the uh, the the examiner marking part of three. Is he's sort of thinking, and he said to me, like, you know, would I would I pay that money for that lesson? Was it worth it? Is it good value for money? So, um, and also, you know, put, putting that aside your, for your part three or your standards check, if we do this every single time with our real customers, then that obviously is going to make good business sense and you're going to have happy pupils that will repeat buy from you, book more lessons with you, recommend their friends, families. So then your business will grow and you'll be successful. So not only is this good for your part of threes and your standards checks, but it's good for business. And this is how we should be doing it. So let's get started. So one of the things that I really liked about the way they've explained it in the textbook is how how what we're talking about will relate to the part three marking sheet. So let's just have a look what they've done. So I've just recreated the chart here and this is what they've put in the textbook. So this is us up the top, the instructor, obviously. And during a lesson, we're managing risk, aren't we? We're always thinking about managing risk. And we're also trying to get achieve a goal with our learner. Our learners are there to achieve something, to learn something and achieve a goal. So if we deal with down the left hand side first, as the instructor, our inputs, i.e. what we say, what we do, will impact upon this goal. And that's where we're going to start with first. And then later on we're going to look at the other side and think, well as an instructor, we're, we're managing risk, so we need to manage that risk. And if we do that, we will achieve our goal. So learning takes place for the pupil. They're in a safe environment and it's good value for money. So we're gonna be talking more in depth about this, this chart, okay? So let's relate that to the marking sheet. So let's have a look. This is the, um, as you may recognise, the, the part of three marker sheet in pink. And as you know, if you've done an ADI standards check, it's the same form, but it's a green form with a few.
few less boxes at the top. So um, let's think about the marking sheet. So it looks at lesson planning. It looks at risk management. And it looks at teaching and learning strategies in those three broad topics. So think about those and now relate back to what we looked at here. In the goal setting, we're thinking about our lesson planning, aren't we? Have we picked the correct objective, the learning aim for this pupil, for example? Risk management, we're managing risk, so it's all done in a safe environment. And here at the top, the instructor, their inputs is your teaching and learning strategies. How you get that information across to your pupil to achieve their goals and to manage risk. Now that looks very simple there, doesn't it? But as anyone that's had a go at doing this and practices doing this or, or have taken a standard check or, or a part three and failed, the, this, this task of juggling this in the right measure is a difficult task and will need practice. So you as the instructor will need to practice this. It just won't happen by reading a book or listening to me on a video. You need to get out and practice it. But if you understand it, then it's going to put you on the right track to what you need to be doing and be successful and go past your standard check part three. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So we've looked at the chart, we've looked at our role as a, what we're doing as an instructor, managing goals, achieving goals with pupils, managing risk, and we've looked at the marking sheet and how that kind of fits together and relates. So one of the things I'd like to talk about, and indeed the book talks about this, is quite often the examiner will say that you failed either through over or under instruction. So again, let's just have a look at this. If you think about the input, so as the instructor, the input is you're giving to achieve this goal. You're either saying too much, potentially, when the people could kind of get on and have a go and, and do it themselves, or you're not saying enough and they need more help because they're just floundering and getting nowhere near this goal and kind of getting worse and they're moving further away from the goal. So having the right level of instruction at the right time is so important so as the lesson goes through and the wheels are moving and, the, and the, the lesson's going you need to be able to adapt and know when to talk and when not to talk and in terms of your risk you need to know when to jump in when not to jump in in terms of making that environment safe so you're kind of going through this constant process where you might think right here i need to be quiet and let the people get on with it and try out their new skill whilst managing risk or you might need to jump in and, and, and be more proactive and keep everything safe and make sure that goals achieved so that's sort of the you know the link with over under instruction and it's an easy thing to say but a very hard thing to do and I'm sure you've all got your trainers and that could be something you want to talk to your trainers about and say well how can I get this level of instruction right how much input do i give to my pupils to help them achieve their goals and a lot of this is done through agreement with the people as well um, and how you manage the risk with the people how much you, know, you need to keep that environment safe and knowing when to jump in when not to jump in um, are, are very key skills and something like i say you need to go out and practice with your trainers um, and get help with that. So that's the, something to think about. So let's now explore this part, the goal, and we're relating this to the marking sheet, aren't we? Because we've already talked about the goal part as being an integral part of the lesson planning element of your lesson. And let's just look at that a little bit more closely. So let's think about the part three marking sheet. So let's just have a look at that. When we goal set, to do that, we, as an instructor, we need to have a plan, don't we? So if we think about the lesson planning section within the ADI Part 3 marking sheet or standards check sheet, we need to identify the learner's goals. That's an integral part. 
that we don't deliver a lesson that we want to teach, that we actually identify what that particular individual, that learner, actually needs to achieve. So we agree, we, well, we identify the learner's goal and we agree the lesson structure with the pupil. Then as an instructor, we need to think about suitable, suitable practice areas where we could go to the del deliver that lesson so it's not too difficult for them, that the, the route allows them to practice and gain confidence in the task that they're trying to do. And we've already talked about um, the need to adapt the lesson plan where necessary. So if it's not working, if it's too difficult, the goal's too difficult, we can adapt the lesson plan and simplify if we need to, or if it's too easy, we could raise the bar and adapt the plan. So that's how the, the setting of goals fits in with lesson planning on that marking sheet. So now I'd like to talk to you about SMART goals. So many of you would have heard about SMART goals um, previously, but if you haven't, I'd just like to cover that with you as well. So let's have a look at setting goals in a SMART way. So goals need to be SMART, and what that stands for is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timed. So if we can follow those five elements when we're setting goals for our pupils that really focus your goal and you'll get a better outcome, you're more likely to achieve it with your pupil. So let's break that down into an example. Let's say that last week your pupil was, um, I don't know, they were working on junctions, let's say. So we've been from major road to minor road turning left, going around a block of four junctions. And last week there were issues with the people steering. So let's say they were steering a little bit too wide, going onto the other side of the road and getting into a bit of a muddle with that. So now we plan the next lesson. We think, right, how? what is the specific need of that pupil? So, so we're talking smart, so specific. So what we really need to do is work on steering for that lesson. It would be too broad an objective to say we're going to work on junctions and MSPSL and LADA. There's so many skills involved in that task. You know, are they struggling with their speed on approach? Are they struggling with their, their gears? Are they struggling with their steering? The time of the signal? The list could go on, couldn't it? So we know the people we know what happened next week last week and, w and we know that what the goal needs to be here so we need to have a specific objective of steering okay to measure that we could talk to our pupil so we've identified there is a need to work on steering and we need some way of measuring um this steering goal. So we could use a scaling technique. So we could ask the people to scale themselves from zero to 10 on how confident or how competent they feel at steering. And, you know, because we've just had the conversation that they've been going wide, they're not very good at it. They will probably score themselves quite low, maybe a three or a four out of 10. So we know where we are now. We know where our baseline is, where we're starting from. Okay, so now we need to, our goal needs to be achievable. So now we could set a goal on where we want to be by the end of this lesson. So something achievable, 10 out of 10 might be a bit unrealistic, a bit unachievable. So, um, so we need to set their expectations and make sure whatever goal we're trying to achieve is achievable within this lesson. So we might say, well, let's agree to get you to a six out of 10 for your steering. So now we've got a clear target that's achievable. We have to then think about the realistic part. Is that a realistic goal? Is our goal realistic? So from moving to a three to a six could be deemed um, realistic. If we set our expectations too high, then we might be unrealistic. You know, like the, you know, the classic one where people come to you who haven't, can't drive or only have done a few lessons and they want to do their test in a couple of months. 
that might be an unrealistic um, target based on their current ability. Um, so we need to think about that. And the, the last thing in the SMART objective is the T, the times. So we need to think, you know, how much time have we got to achieve this objective? Um, so in, the, in this example where we're trying to help the people with their steering on a lesson, um, we might say we've got a two hour lesson. How much time should we allocate to this? So the people might be quite agreeable. So well, can we use the first half of the lesson, like the first hour or the first 20 minutes or 30 minutes to work on this steering and then we can move on here yeah, because I would like to have a go at bay parking or or whatever it is that they want to achieve in that lesson so within um, a one hour lesson or a two hour lesson you might have many objectives and each objective each goal needs to be smart okay so let's take this junction and they're struggling with the steering so we could simplify and we could just say to them, look, what we want you to do is get to second gear speed once you've moved off, put it in second gear, leave it in second gear so we don't have to worry about the gear change, just so you can focus on your steering. So, and we could help with that. So they're in second gear, you know, check your mirrors, do, 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 do all that, and say, right, so now we're going to get the speed right, and then your left hand's going to come up top and steer, and round they go. And that might work. So now there are they're managing to steer safely round the corner um, and we've simplified it and kept them in second gear so one less thing for them to worry about to do so if they're achieving that with the steering well, then we could raise the bar can't we say so, well next time let's get we'll get going we'll get you to third gear and so then you could reduce your speed down to second gear and steer so you'll have two jobs to do so now we've got two goals going on so they're going to be changing gear and steering so more responsibility is coming over to the pupil let's take another scenario so same same block going left around the junctions working on steering let's say the pupil now is approaching just too quickly so they're reaching those bends they're going around too fast it's not safe potentially dangerous potential for going wide onto the other side of the road um, unstable for the car etc so now clearly there is risk involved with that and we need to manage that so at this point I would adapt the lesson plan and say move the objective of steering and change the goal to speed on approach because that is now in terms of managing our risk that is the thing that we need to do that's what the people need that's the goal that they now need to achieve so now this is where we can adjust so now we could get help them say right so now the main objective is for you to reduce your speed to a safe speed by using your brake and i can help you with when to use your brake so we get all that speed off before the bends and then we can focus on that steering so sometimes you might just need to adapt and and change the goal to meet the overall needs of the pupil and the lesson Okay, so what I want to do now is talk a little bit more about the risk side. So let's just remind ourselves of what it is we're doing. So there's the chart again. So we've, we've now talked about the instructor and the inputs we can make to achieve this goal. And we've talked about smart goals, smart objectives, and we've talked about lesson planning and how that relates to the marking sheet. So lesson planning here, instructor teaching techniques, and here risk so now we're going to talk about this bit how the instructor can manage risk for our people so let's have a conversation about that we've already talked about the need to set smart goals you need to do that side the left side before you get onto the risk side we need to have a, an achievable goal otherwise how can we manage risk if we don't really know what it is we're specifically doing we need to be specific about things for, for example steering speed on approach to be able to manage that risk and, and agree who's going to be doing what if we don't have a clear specific smart objective it's going to be very difficult for you to start managing the risk side of this 
this chart. Okay, so it's very important you start with the left and then you do the right with the risk. You need to think in terms of risk about the route. So before you do the lesson, visualize your route, go through it. So if we've got these these four left turns that we're going to go around the block to help them with their steering or their speed on approach. Um, think about the other things that might crop up, like is it on a bus route? Are there roadworks there today? Are there lots of cyclists? Is it near a school? Will there be pedestrians? What time of day is it? Because you need to factor that in because you're going to be managing the risk as they go around there. And you need to sort of agree, well, who's going to be doing what when we, if we meet a bus? Have they done this before? Will they need help, for example? And, and someone in their lowest, earliest stage of learning to drive will need your help. So you can agree how that would be managed and the level of help you would give, etc. Whilst they focus on their smart objective, steering, speed, whatever it may be. Okay, um, so once you've visualised your, your route, you've thought about what's on that route, time of day, and you're anticipating potential risks and how you can manage that risk and keep the lesson environment safe. Because if the, the pupil feels safe, then learning will take place on the key objectives that you've, you've agreed with them. Yeah, so we're talking about managing risk. Now, as an instructor, if you've been out practicing on your part three, if you're on a trainee license, or indeed as a, as a driving instructor, you've, well, I'll admit it, we've probably all been in situations where you just feel, do you know what, I'm just fighting fire here. There's so much going wrong, the lesson's going to pop, and all I'm doing is managing risk. I don't think the goal side's being achieved at all, because we're just literally hanging on, where the pupil's hanging on, the pupils out their depth, the instructors out their depth. It's not a good learning environment. And like I say, we're just fighting for survival, firefighting, just dealing with fault after fault and trying to put the fires out. And that is not where you want to be. If you are in that situation, then you need to pull up and you need to think, right, we need to change this plan. This plan is not working. The, the goal could be, or the goals, you could maybe have set too many goals, too broad, not being specific enough. So your pupil's overwhelmed by, I've got to do steering, gears, slow the thing down. Or, oh my God, and, and, and I keep getting my signal at the wrong time because that little side road. It's just like, oh my God, I'm just, ugh, I'm out of my depth. I'm, I'm not coping. So it could be that you've set too many goals your pupils the goals are too demanding or it could be the route it could be the route that you've picked it's just there's too many other things in between these junctions to deal with like the time of day being near a school you know um near a high school at 10 o'clock in the morning lovely go back down there for your next lesson it's now three o'clock quarter past three it's a nightmare buses everywhere coaches it's just another scenario so you need to be mindful of that and managing that risk so we we keep that people achieving objectives learning learnings taking place value for money and you're managing the risks so they're in a safe environment and that's your job to keep them safe to do the bits they can't do yet you know they're on a journey they can't do everything all at once because they can't drive so you, you prioritise which things need to come first, work on those things, and as they get them, give them something else to do. And gradually you'll, they'll be able to do that whole block, that whole junction, deal with buses and all the kids running across the roads all by themselves. But they're not going to achieve that in one lesson, are they? So remember, your job as the instructor is to manage the risk, keep them safe, and, and facilitate them to be able to work on the specific objectives that you've set learning to taking place i know i keep talking about the same thing but it it all fits together and once the instructor gets this then they can go out and start practicing and think right it makes sense and that's the only point i'm making this video is hopefully to try and make some sense of this and it 
I make it sound like easy that little chart but doing it is, is not so easy it's knowing when to do these things when not to do things how much input how much managing risk you're doing at a given any given time in that lesson so you just get that get it right it takes practice it's important as instructors we understand how people learn people learn best when they can experiment have a go in a safe environment working out for themselves what they need to do and what they need to improve we just talked about sharing responsibility for risk being very specific with the tasks so which bits your pupils responsible for and whatever the goal of that part of the lesson is that's the bit we're going to give them more responsibility so they can get better at it the other bits in between to make sure the lesson is safe we can help and manage that just to give them responsibility for the task in hand they get better they grow in confidence give them the next task and as, of course, the lessons go on, you as the instructor, as the teacher, will be teaching less and the pupil will be taking much more responsibility on for the training. So we're, we're, we're talking about who's doing what and also we need to talk about the what ifs. What if it don't go right? Okay, I'm going to give you responsibility for steering around the corner and I'm happy for you to have a go and do that. But what if? What if you get your hands in a muddle, you're going wide and there's a bus coming? Not going to let you do that, am I? Not going to let you do that. So we need to think about that. And so well, in, that, in, a, in a situation where you're getting into difficulty, and if safety is an issue, then I, as an instructor, will jump in. I, I'll verbally do it. I'll tell you to slow down or tell you when to put your left hand up to the top to steer. And if that doesn't work, then, you know, ultimately I can go for the nuclear option the physical and 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 just keep you safe and that's the only reason i'll do that once we've had a safety critical incident yeah, it's very important that as instructors we give feedback the correct level of feedback in a timely manner to help the pupil fully understand what just went on there the risks involved, the consequences, how we're going to need to do that differently. Um, so it's given much more weight if it's safety critical. So we're talking about sharing responsibility and the what ifs. Okay, so let's just, just sum up. We've, we've been talking about risk. What does it say on the ADA marking, ADI part three marking sheet that the instructor needs to do to demonstrate these competencies of managing risk? Well, Let's talk about it. Just to recap, we need to still give directions clear and in good time. We need to give instructions clear and in good time. The correct level of instruction, the correct amount, the correct amount of input, as we've been saying. There might be times where you need to say less and let them go on, have a go. There may be times when you need to say more because they're just floundering and they need a couple of goes of you helping them just to get it right. So they know what they've got to do. Think, yeah, got it. Right, now you can have a go. I'll, let, I'll hand over more responsibility. Now you kind of get that routine going. As the ADI, you need to be aware of your pupil and the surroundings. So keep an eye on your pupil. Um, how are they behaving? How are they feeling? Have these conversations with your people, um, especially when it comes to part three and standards check. You know, they've got someone in the back. You know, the examiner's watching you, but they still feel that pressure. So are they behaving differently? Be aware of that. Um, maybe they're stalling because they've not set up their copy drill properly at the start of the lesson. Maybe they were being polite because the examiner got in behind them, so they moved their seat forwards a little bit. And you didn't pick up on that. So now they're trying to do these T-junctions or whatever. And they're stalling and they're being polite. And at the end of the lesson they say, oh, well, yeah, you know, I struggle. The clutch weren't quite right because I moved my seat for... Nah. You know, you need to be aware of that. 
happening. And you need to be aware of the surroundings, what's going on around, the risk behind. You know, if you're coming to, um, if you're doing roundabouts and speed on approach to roundabouts is an issue, and you've got a white van, sorry, stereotype, white van drivers, but if you've got a white van, a courier vehicle following very closely behind, yeah, your risk is now elevated, isn't it? Much more than if you had nothing behind or someone following at a safe distance. Because if they're going in too fast and there's someone coming, they're going to need to put their brakes on quite sharp and you've got someone quite close behind, the risk is now escalating. So being aware of your surroundings and managing the risk. Hey, Mr. Pupil, are you aware of what's happening behind? All right, so because of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just give you a little bit of help with this and I want you to start and I want you to start braking now. Let's keep him at a safe distance so we can manage that situation. Next time around when you haven't got the van there, hand over more responsibility. Say, okay, yeah, I want you to take more responsibility for the slowing the car to speed on approach. If that's the specific objective, that you've agreed. Knowing when to intervene, when it's appropriate. So we've just kind of been touching on that. Um, yeah, you, can, you need to intervene verbally, a bit of Q&A, a, a bit of a, a prompt. Do you need to tell them, no, you need to slow down now? Or, or the what if, if, if the risk escalates so it's not safe, physical, you need to be in control of that car at all times. It's not acceptable for you to conduct your lessons where the pupils floundering and affecting other road users and, users and actually causing real potential risk of a collision because that is not what the general public expects when they see you out with your L-plates on, should be happening. They complain about the stuff like that because they're expecting that car is going to be kept safe. It's your job. Yeah. So, um, and the other thing, as we've already just mentioned, you know, what is it saying on the ADI sheet under risk? Give sufficient feedback for these safety critical incidents, as we've just mentioned. So I'm hoping, let's just summarise. Let's get this out one last time. So we've talked about your role as the instructor. Start going down the left-hand side, agreeing a goal, using smart objectives, planning a lesson. This is your lesson planning part. And think about what kind of input you need to give to that pupil so that their goal is achieved and learning takes place. Once you've got that, then you can think, well, how am I going to manage the risk on that? Who's going to do what? So then you can come down the left side and think, well, now we've got our goal, our specific tasks. You can agree who's doing what, who's taking responsibility for aspects of risk and how you are managing it. And if you get these parts right, we will achieve the objective of the goal. So we've got a safe lesson, learning's taking place, value for money, good. And if you do that, you're going to be passing your part three you're going to be passing your standards check and and if you do it every lesson as a driving instructor you'll be a successful driving instructor because you'll have happy pupils getting good value for money they'll want to come back to you they'll recommend you to all their friends and the family so it's you know it's your interest you'll have a good business if you can grasp this so go away talk to your trainers practice this why don't you video yourself on a lesson why don't you get your your phone stick it get a suction grip on the windscreen ask if it's okay with the people so i want to record the lesson for for me really so i can just watch it back then you can go away and reflect on your own performance how you did in this lesson because you'll be the biggest critic of you you watch yourself back, you think, oh, I did that wrong, I didn't do that, I didn't listen to the people. The people said, I want to do that, and then I did that. So you can just sort of see where, where you did well, where you didn't do so well, and then you can start learning, think, well, what would I do differently to make that different? And then go back to your next lesson. So reflect, watch the video, reflect, refine your plan, then go back to the next lesson and put the new things in place. I always feel, because there's so much, the, the job of being a driving instructor is such a complex task, because you're managing all this in a moving classroom. 
just try and get better at one thing. Each lesson you go out with your trainer, think, well, what specific goal would you like to achieve and get better at that one thing? Okay. When you go out with real people, record it, like I said, and think, well, today I want to get better at my giving directions clear and in good time or giving my instructions clear and in good time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.